Well, hi there. We're trying something new. We're uploading this week's lunch gathering to YouTube. We hope that you'll enjoy it this way. If you would like to subscribe, there's a little red subscribe button down below and a little bell thing. And if you click on the bell thing, it will alert you to when new videos will be posted to the BDR net channel. Let's see how it works. Thanks for listening. So today, I am really thrilled. At uh, last minute notice, uh, Greg has uh, really kindly uh, offered to uh, be our presenter today. And it's really a treat to have Greg Oganowski with us. Greg is a longtime broadcast engineer, uh, audio processing guru, both on his own and uh, a large part of uh, the uh, Optimods and the streaming products that came out of Orban. And uh, now uh, Greg has his own operation, Streams, and uh, has been working hard on this HLS HTTP live streaming. So we're going to turn our attention to Greg. Uh, we're really pleased to have you here. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you everybody for... Uh for showing up. They do say that 90% of life is just showing up. Um, at any rate, the story with this HLS is it's a new modern streaming protocol that addresses all the shortcomings of uh, the current streaming protocols that everybody has sort of um, migrated onto. Um, Shoutcast and Icecast were basically the only ways to uh, uh, do this at any popular level. Uh, there, early on, there was a thing called RTP and RTSP, which is actually an extremely uh, good protocol, but it's really complicated. Um, any of you running any of the audio over IP protocols, um, well, you get your taste of RTP and a little bit of RTSP over there. So you can understand the complexity and put that in the streaming world and uh, put that into uh, some unseasoned developers and you've got a recipe for a disaster there. So that said, everyone pretty much migrated over to this um, Shoutcast and Icecast thing out of simplicity. Um, it's a protocol called ICY. It stands for no joke, I can yell, yes, this is what you get from a couple of guys that build a protocol on a Saturday afternoon and uh, uh, throw it out there. Along with this protocol, um, it, it's just filled with limitations. And I have to honestly say that, um, you know, as a professional broadcaster, um, this has not served us well, starting with, uh, starting with the metadata, the now playing information. Contrary to popular belief, it is not real time. Uh, it shows up when it wants to. The protocol is not synchronous and there's no way to make it synchronous. Um, now you might think, well, okay, so the title and artist shows up a bit later, a bit early, no big deal. Well, that metadata is also used for ad insertion instruction and therein lies a big problem because now you have uh, ads being inserted and coming and going at the wrong times. And as we all know in radio, timing is everything. So the world is changing. Broadcast world is changing with it. And your listeners are migrating from traditional radio over to streaming. So we need to give them something that really works well. Back in, at the end of 2014, uh, Orban was sold and those guys over there didn't want the streaming technology. So we took it and went with it. And we had a very large client right out of the barn. Um, that client happened to be the one who developed HLS. So we had a front row seat with those guys. They had a requirement for some live encoders and they wanted us to do it because they had seen that we were probably the only ones that were gonna pull it off. So we did. And 
If you have an iPhone in the lower right corner, there's a player, all the live streams over there um, were provided right here from us. All in HLS and HLS is a wonderful protocol. For starters, it doesn't require, um, it doesn't require a streaming server. You can stream live through something as simple as your own web server, believe it or not, or you can use simple cloud storage, um, which are the least cost products from uh, the Amazon cloud, Google cloud, or uh, Microsoft uh, Azure. Azure, Azure, soup du jour, however you want to pronounce that. Um, there you go, Barry. Yeah, you hit it again, probably. Yeah. I go in too fast. Or? Here's one of our problems. Um, we've got this thing called the internet, which is a packet-based network, and we're trying to get real time through it. <laughs> Along with everybody else. And once again, ha, 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 ha. So... We need a protocol that works like the internet works. And simply put, HLS works that way. HLS works like somebody is clicking on something on a website about every 10 seconds. So you have intrinsic keep alives and it's all chunk based and you have intrinsic buffers so that the audio buffering is dramatically reduced. You have to have a very, very serious network problem in order for HLS to fail. And uh, the reason why this is important, a lot of people have, have mentioned to us, well, the internet's getting better, we're getting 5G technology, the data rates are going up, everything's gonna be okay. No, it's not, it's just gonna fill up with 8K video and then we're right back to where we started. So in order to give people reliable streams, we've got to literally play every trick in the book. And, uh, and HLS is one of those. Um, it's probably appropriate for me to mention right now that all of the video streaming services, your Apple TVs, your Hulus, your Amazon Prime, um, name them all, Netflix, they're all using these segmented protocols like HLS and it is definitely what has fueled the, uh, um, the cord cutting craze. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah. So we sort of went over the I can yell thing already. We can, we can skip this again. Hit it again, Barry. And then there was Flash. Well, <laughs> Uh, Flash has turned into a security disaster, so it's not even to be considered at this point at the end of last year. It was completely deprecated, so anybody using anything Flash is, is now just old technology and should be put out to pasture. Hit it again. So we need to stop the streaming madness, and I've already gone there. Um, HLS is it. Go ahead and hit it. Um, I think it did this already too. So this was just, um, you know, where we're going with HLS and Dash. HL, HLS and Dash are, are very closely related protocols. Uh, they're both segmented. Uh, Dash is an MPEG standard. HLS came out of the Apple folks. Um, there's a, a, a new recent uh, addition to HLS uh, so that HLS uses what they call fragmented MP4 segments and it's 100% compatible with Dash. So now if you have uh, um, your streaming inventory uh, can be completely compatible with HLS or Dash. The only difference is the manifest file, no big deal. So go ahead and hit it, Barry. And once again, the uh, cord cutting craze, as I mentioned, all the video providers are already there. Um, and it's essentially time for us audio guys to um, do the same thing. Go ahead. In 
an audio stream, there are two basic components. There's the audio, obviously, and then there's the metadata, which is the data about the content. And the, the metadata here um, is more than just artist and title um, or the now playing information. It can include all sorts of information um, about the bit rates, the sample rates, um, the loudness, the audio loudness values, uh, the type of codec. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on um, uh, behind the scenes along with the actual uh, audio data. Um, and all of this gets put together and then it goes into what's referred to as a transport. And HLS and DASH and the old legacy ICY are all considered transports. Go ahead. And the modern transport supports AAC, LC, HEAAC, extended HEAAC, which is also uh, the official name for XHEAAC is USAC. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, confusing names for a moment. XHEAAC, which you're going to start to hear an awful lot about. The term XHEAAC is actually a Fraunhofer trademark. The official MPEG name is USAC, or the word extended HEAAC. How's that for confusion? Um, but I think I think we get it. Just remember that. XHEAAC, USAC, and extended HEAAC are all the same. And now with uh, HLS, we're also able to do lossless, which is really pretty cool. Um, that's the output of the audio processor or the output of the playout system delivered to your client. I remember the first day we got this working, um, I decided that uh, it was time for lunch. So I punched in a URL in my phone and I got in the car and I told myself, oh, this is gonna be good. I drove to pick up lunch and I didn't have one dropout at 800 kilobits per second. So for what it's worth, <laughs> lossless over mobile actually works. Um, and this will finally put MP3 out to pasture um, where, where, where it should have been a long, long time ago. Next. And then there's the metadata, as I mentioned before. Um, textual information about the program material. It can transmit graphical information about the program uh, material, which is also another um, revenue uh, uh, stream. Um, we're not seeing very many content providers actually uh, throw up graphics during commercials. And there's another value added resource that you could collect revenue on. Um, all, all you need is the playout system to support it. Our encoders will transmit all of that and the player can throw up, uh, um, oh, let's say you're running a McDonald's spot. It can throw up the McDonald's logo. Then uh, if there's a special offer, you could throw up a, a coupon, uh, throw that up and then go back to the logo. Um, lots of revenue opportunities with all of this. Uh, then there's of course the content insertion control, which is the network level ad insertion. So all of this is done with metadata and the metadata in HLS is 100% synchronous provided it's implemented correctly. That's the one thing you've got to watch with HLS is we're starting to see some content distribution networks uh, have it available, but their implementations aren't correct because whoever developed the encoders um, either didn't read the specification correctly or they didn't understand it correctly and what have you. But um, HLS is a very deep protocol and uh, uh, it's very important that the implementation be uh, correctly followed in order to um, uh, be awarded all its benefits. Next. And uh, all this is going to do is um, give you high quality audio, which everybody uh, strives for. You've got elegant on-time metadata, program associated graphics. It looks great in the car on CarPlay on these great big dashboards. 
And uh, I know uh, we're primarily US based here, but uh, all of this metadata is uh, all what we call UTF-8, which means it supports any character set on the planet. And uh, we've even got some Thai streams and some uh, um, Chinese streams up and all the characters just appear. It's great. It's a beautiful thing. No mistakes, no funny business. Looks like a million bucks. Next. So these are three different types of block diagrams. The ICY to ICY is an example of what not to do today. The ICY RTMP to HLS transformation is another thing not to do. Um, this is a, a, a thing that you'll, you'll get from some CDNs when you ask for HLS, their first comment is, oh yeah, we can provide that. And then they ask you for uh, your old legacy ICY stream and they transform it. Well, this doesn't get you synchronous metadata, so you're only halfway there. And with, with HLS direct or with dash direct, the way we do it, uh, the encoder does all the heavy lifting and um, it uh, does all the audio encoding, it uh, assembles the metadata, and then it does all the uploading over to the, to the, to the actual server. And then the server is only responsible for taking those segments and delivering them to the player, which uh, then basically disassembles that and reassembles it into contiguous audio and synchronous uh, display of the metadata. And life is good. And that's the real way to do HLS. This is a real simplified uh, explanation of this, but, but this is the gist. Next. Greg? Yes. So all you need then is like Apache or? Um... Absolutely. Apache, Nginx, Lighty. Yeah, any of those. Um, and we actually have documents as to how to set this stuff up. Um, it's real easy to get one, to get one of these things going on a self-contained, um, on one little self-contained computer. I've got a little, uh, one of those, I've got a couple of them actually around here. Uh, the little um, nooks. Uh, nooks, little nooks. Nook. Or you could even run it on a laptop and, and I set up the web server. You can even use IIS, God forbid. <laughs> um, if, if you're a glutton for punishment, you can get it to work. Um, but uh, I've gotten real good at just editing text files and getting on with it. The problem with IIS is the UI gets very tedious, but lo and behold, I've got a document that'll walk you through it and it does work. And uh, you can run one of our encoders on the same computer. You can run the uh, Optimod uh, software on the same machine. It makes a real great self-contained demo. Um, and this is a little bit more detail here. This might be a little bit hard to read, but if anybody's interested in any of this, I'd be more than happy to forward you this presentation. And we've got a lot of other detail where all you guys need to do is just ping me, ping me offline. I'll, I'll send you whatever you want about all this. But this uh, diagram here, the, the green one on the top, um, it shows the packetization and then what is inside the segments. So you get a real good idea of how all of this works and it compares it with the other legacy protocols. And then there's a description as to um, basically how I described all of this already is outlined right here. Uh, in a little bit more detail. So um, as I say, if you, if you want a copy of this, um, just ask and uh, th this, this gives you all the detail on it. Hey, Greg. Yes, sir. Greg. Yes, sir. Um, how are you tackling latency with this? And also um, someone else is asking if this will run on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the encoders won't because we don't have an encoder that runs Linux, at least not yet. But you could certainly set a server up over there. Um, I'll, I'll tell you something that I did as a, I never thought in a million years that this would work. I've got like a $5 or a $6 a month account 
over on uh, Vulture. It's all virtual. Set it all up. It's running Nginx. We've probably got 12 clients on that thing. It works like a champ. It's unbelievable. And there's a bunch of Windows boxes that are running the encoder and the Orban uh, uh, signal processing software. And it just uh, uploads to Vulture. And the Vulture server even serves the HTML5 players. I can give you guys links to all of that. And it's pretty incredible. It just sits there and runs all day long. Does that answer that question? Yeah, but what about latency? Latency with HLS is directly proportional to the number of segments and the segment duration. And that said, that is directly related to the alleged buffer. So you could set these things up for, oh, I forget how high, um, but you, you, can, you can get to like two to four minutes, but you can literally unplug the ethernet cable or turn your wireless off for two or four minutes and you never drop the stream. And provided you turn all that back on within that time period, you never know that's happened. So that is the reliability of this. Now we're working on the next version of all of this, which is LLHLS, which is the low latency version. And uh, that will be forthcoming here very soon. And that, that will be an attempt to uh, turn the latency down and still offer the benefits of this HLS. And performance on that will be forthcoming. So anyone looking uh, for a, a real-time thing over the internet, I mean, that's the fundamental difference between the audio over IP protocols and streaming. Um, audio over IP will not work on the public internet reliably. Uh, don't let anybody tell you any different. It just can't be done. Um, if you have fast enough internet, if everything is back to back, you might be able to get it to work for a little while, but it's not gonna be reliable. It just will not hold up. Um, the public internet has no quality of service um, level. It, 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 it can't be done reliably. So we could probably move on to the next, uh, yeah. Um, I think we did this already. I'm not sure what happened here. Wonder if I have those double. Yeah, I might, I need to, might need to pull those out. They got doubled somehow. Um, this is a block diagram of a legacy ICY situation. And the red X's are all the items that get eliminated from an HLS implementation. So all that stuff goes away. And obviously when you take things away, reliability goes up. Go ahead, next. Uh, this is what happens when all that goes away. You replace it with a new encoder and then you have uploaders. And, uh, oh yeah, here's another good, interesting thing. File streaming, which is basically on demand, and live streaming with HLS are 100% compatible. So with the streams encoder, it runs, it's able to run in two different ways. You can throw it in archive mode where it doesn't manage the segments and the segments can live on the server forever. If you take those segments and play them back at a later date, they play in exactly the same player that you would use for a live stream. And here's the cool part. All of the metadata is intact. So if you had a live stream that you archived, you get all of the metadata just as it was when uh, it originally played. Next. Excuse me one moment. 
Good morning. I'm sure it is. We all know what those are. So uh, I don't know how these are out of order, Barry. I'm so sorry for this. Well, I just keep changing them till you tell me to stop. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, we've been through all this. Yeah, I've got to double check this file. Okay, um, sorry about that, guys. So here's uh, yeah, go go back, go back one. Yeah, here here's the the whole enchilada. Um, you start with an audio playout system, um, and then you've got basically two outputs from your playout system. You've got metadata and you've got audio. Uh, audio goes through the audio processing. Metadata goes through metadata processing. That can sometimes be optional, but many of the terrestrial streams are definitely using some, some form of metadata processing where it's um, uh, to do the um, title artist lookup, um, do some sort of... Uh, uh, commercial uh, massaging, uh, what have you. But then that ultimately makes its way into the streaming audio encoder where it gets assembled into one contiguous stream. And then you'll have a commercial ad insertion server, something like AdsWiz that lives out on the cloud. And then that gets picked up into the, uh, the actual streaming server, which in the case of HLS will be uh, some sort of a web server or cloud storage. And then you might also have a content image server involved, which is going to deal with your album art or possibly uh, commercial images. And then that makes its way to the actual player client, which would be anything from a browser to mobile clients, what have you. Next. And, and the client this, doesn't require any special software? I, I'm sorry, say that one more time. The client doesn't require any special software. It's just HTML5. Yeah, it's HTML5, but in order to make this work with HLS, um, you have to create a, a JavaScript, what's referred to as an MSE client. That's the media source extensions. And that's what all the video guys are using. And that's what gives you your precision timing and okay. allows you to have metadata listeners. Um, we actually offer free player code for that, that you can take and modify and make the thing uh, uh, look any way you want. But the core engine is all there, um, which does all the metadata parsing. And uh, then all you need to do is just, you know, apply the appropriate HTML and CSS to give it the look and feel that you want. Mm. But the uh, audio engine is all there. Hey, Greg. This is a typical ICY or shoutcast, icecast encoder. And uh, contrary to popular belief, but the, the metadata and the audio actually come out of these encoders with two asynchronous connections to the streaming server. And therein lies all the asynchronous trouble. Go ahead and hit the next one. Hey, Greg. Yes, sir. Um, when I was at Entercom and we were running radio.com, uh, we were actually delaying the metadata out. Um, this way, uh, it would match the cue points going through the CDN. So therefore it would be on time. Yes. Right. Are you able to do that here? Yeah. Our encoders do have a, a, a delay tweak for that because, um, where that's also important is if there's any latency in the audio processing, you'll need to line up the, uh, the, the metadata with that as well. Uh, somewhere here, I don't think it's in this presentation, we'll find out, but somewhere here I have a diagram of all the places that metadata can go wrong in the latency department. Um, if it's not in here, um, uh, you guys can just ask me for that and I'll, I'll give you that. It's sort of mind boggling where, where all of that can go wrong. Uh, once again, HLS really reduces that whole thing way down um, to uh, I, I, the diagram that I have shows the difference between these two. But let, let's, let's see what happens. Um, this is an HLS encoder 
And uh, th this shows where all the heavy lifting is to, um, to do all of this. And HLS also has the added benefit of being able to uh, send out multiple bit rates. And if the player is so designed, um, it can detect network uh, conditions and automatically switch um, depending on network conditions to um, higher or lower bandwidths. Next slide. This is uh, a typical streaming encoder system and it shows the audio capture. It shows um, the various uh, audio capture devices that we're able to support. Uh, it goes into the Orban uh, Optima PC uh, native audio processor, and then it gets uh, transitioned into the live stream. Oh, excuse me, the live streaming encoder, and then outputs in the various bit rates. So this is uh, a little bit more detail on one of our actual streaming encoder systems. We offer our systems in both software or complete hardware solutions. So you can do, you can, you can run it either way. You can purchase the software from just us uh, and run it on your own hardware, or you can get the complete systems all put together either way. Next slide. And so far, these are all the places where this HLS is supported. Um, more and more of this is coming online every day. It's just a ton of places for all this. Um, next, next slide, please. Metadata opportunities, we already talked about this. Um, we've got uh, the ability to send the text messages, um, describe images, and both of these mechanisms can be used for ad revenue opportunities. Very important right now where everybody's trying to uh, get uh, every single last bit that they can. Next slide. Here's an example of uh, that reference code that uh, we were talking about. And here you can see all the, all the various metadata that gets sent on this. Um, starting with the top where it says the Jazz Groove West, that's the stream name. Then you have the stream description. Then you have the actual artist title. You can send duration of the uh, actual um, audio element that's playing. You can send the bit rates, the type of codec, uh, the channel. All of this stuff can be assigned. Or you can turn it all off and just send artist and title if that's what you're more comfortable with. But uh, HLS has got a very, very extensible way of doing this. And the beautiful thing about this is, is you can send all of this metadata and it doesn't break all the other clients that elect to not display it. Uh, that's been a big problem with the ICY metadata. Um, if you want to send all this enhanced stuff, it usually shows up in very unelegant ways on other players and you end up with a disaster on the dashboard. Uh, next slide. And under the hood, you can take a look here. This is one of our diagnostic uh, players. You can see here where everything gets sent and you can see down at the, um, uh, the user definable eights, uh, I threw in a bunch of uh, different language uh, sets and you can see everything just displays. That's the beauty of UTF-8. You would obviously not want to display this to a, um, you know, to a nice client. Uh, but as I said, this is just one of our diagnostic things. So you can see that everything is working. Uh, next slide. Here's what this looks like on a, on a CarPlay display. Next slide. Uh, this one actually shows the, the year of the track. Next slide. This is what the same stream would look like in our streams player. And you can see that the year uh, is being sent on this thing. But in this particular one, uh, we opted not to show it. And nothing else, as far as the artist and title are concerned, uh, is broken. So that all works very nicely. Next slide. 
this is what it looks like in iTunes. And you can see the artist title and year and uh, the actual, uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, this was album art that was thrown in there. Um, and it was just bubble gum. It happens to be on a bubble gum stream. So there's the bubble gum. Next file, uh, next slide. And uh, there you have it. Um, this is the summary. Um, this gives us, you guys a real good idea of, uh, of how this all works. And uh, this is what, um, what your new audience expects. They're spending lots of money on these new devices. Um, full featured iPhones and full featured Androids, full featured digital dashboards are really expensive things. And they really expect the content providers to support all the things these things can do. And this is how you do it. Next slide. Very important to understand the standards, as I mentioned earlier. So choose your developers wisely, make sure they get it. Um, if they don't, you can always point them to us. We can point them in the right direction. Um, we know how to do this. Next slide. <laughs> this is from the credibility department. Um, these are the standards for HLS dash the metadata standards, lo and behold, there's real standards to do this now. Nobody needs any proprietary business. Um, there's no reason to invent your own. It's all an entrenched standard. It's all been done. Um, this is how you reach all of this stuff. Next. Thank you for your interest. And here we are. Yeah, that uh, diagram on the uh, metadata latency and whatnot isn't in here. I might, I might add that in here. I'll uh, add that in here and, and then anybody who wants a copy of this thing, uh, I'll also look for those redundant slides um, and I'll, I'll get this back to Barry or anybody who just asks me directly, I'll make sure this thing's updated. Hey, Greg, you wanna explain CMAF a little? CMAF is uh, some additional um, standards that are inside HLS. It also addresses encryption. Um, some content providers require encryption um, in order to deliver this stuff um, for copyright reasons. And that all falls under the CMAF specifications. Our encoders are all CMAF compliant. Um, encryption gets really deep because um, unfortunately all the, uh, the browser people don't like to go to the same meetings. I'm not sure why this is, but every, a lot of people all have this non-invented here syndrome. Um, the biggest offender of this are the Microsoft people. Um, you know, Apple Computer has all these fancy names for all their, all their things. Um, they have this thing called FaceTime. Um, they have Apple Music. Uh, they have Safari. But you know, underneath all those fancy names, they're all real IETF internet standards. Um, Microsoft as I said, is the non-invented here syndrome. And they take all of these internet standards and tweak them so that they can call them their own. Um, I don't know what to tell you on this. There are two schools of thought. There's the proprietary way, which is guaranteed not to work with anybody but the provider. And then there's the standards way of doing things, which is pretty much guaranteed to work everywhere. Uh, let me just put it to you this way. Us as broadcasters are really familiar with these things called AM, FM, and TV. And you know, a funny thing about this is if you have an AM, an FM, or a TV receiver, all that content plays on those devices. How many streaming players do you have to have on your device to get all of this stuff? I mean, is this really conducive to productivity and growing your audience? 
people need to really think about this very, very carefully. And HLS is the mechanism to get to all of this stuff with one standard. And getting back to the encryption, each browser uses different encryption. Microsoft browsers use PlayReady. Chrome uses Google's encryption. Apple uses FairPlay. Well, we ended up having to do all three encryptions for the guys at Apple. Um, so we're there and we certainly understand all those difficulties, but CMAF covers all of this. We have a question here from uh, Dave Doherty. He says, classical can present more detail in the metadata. Composer and record label come to mind. How would you handle that? Excuse me one second. I'm the only one here at the moment. This is probably another spam. Let me get rid of this. Good morning. Maybe they want to update his Google listing. <laughs> they want him to know his car insurance um, yeah, needs they to did. be updated. They did. And my extended warranty. That and too. cleaning my backyard. And painting my house. And so it goes. There's so much noise in the world. <laughs> so we're talking about presenting more metadata, metadata from classical music uh, sources? Oh, yes. Yes. Specifically, um, are you talking about like the extended uh, metadata that's often um, associated with uh, classical music tracks? That is absolutely no problem whatsoever with uh, HLS. I don't know if this is, he says, how would you handle that? Uh, provided your playout system offers those fields, you simply fill those out and uh, they get sent in the XML to our streaming encoder. Our streaming encoder supports all of those additional uh, fields. There's, um, I didn't specifically say this, but it was on one of the slides. HLS uses the ID3 v2.4 metadata protocol. So all of those various ID3 frames, which are very classical friendly, are supported in the encoder. You just send those right along and provided your player client is configured to throw those up on the screen, you're golden. Yeah, right there. ID3 v2.4, uh, there's two, there's two uh, URLs that you want. There's the actual structure and there's the actual frames. And that will tell you everything that you need to know about the actual ID3 v2.4 metadata format. And then um, in terms of fragmented MP4 segments, um, that's all thrown in an e-message on the, um, what they call ISO BMFF fragment format that gets all thrown in with ID3 v2.4 and that's how it works. So I would still need to use something middleware like Arctic Palm? Um, you don't have to, but if your playout system supports all these fields. We, we're associated, uh, we have a playout system called Radio DJ. There's even a free version of the thing. That thing supports all of this. So you just build a template in there, for example, and you can send it directly to the encoder. Hey, Greg, um, how are the CDNs doing on um, uh, deprecating, getting rid of a uh, flash? Um, well, Real simple, the MSE players get rid of Flash. That's all just plain JavaScript. But it's the players. But what about at the CDN level? Are they still using it? I hope not. Microsoft's taking it out of IE or yeah. Edge. So Yeah, now Triton uses a proprietary FLV packetization for their encoders. Um. That's all a flash-based protocol, but it's somewhat, somewhat 
insulated from the player client, I think. I have not looked at exactly their bitstream as to what they're delivering. For all I know, they may have developed their own JavaScript to parse the FLV, which is highly ill-advised, horribly proprietary, and just the wrong way to do this. Well, let us know how you truly feel. <laughs> what can I say at a time like this? What about feeding things like Alexa and Sonos? Sonos fully supports HLS. We actually worked with them on this okay. because they uh, Sonos wanted to pick up uh, all of the Apple streams. And uh, um, Alexa fully supports HLS. We actually developed a, a, a streams Alexa skill, but we never deployed it because every time somebody says Alexa play, duh, we would get dinged for that. So we opted not to do that. So any provider that is servicing Alexa for you right now, they're the ones that are paying the freight on that. But to cut to the technology uh, chase on that one, Alexa does fully support HLS. And when we were doing that development, we were actually able to ask Alexa. And, and she knew, she knew. She knew the year of the track and she knew the album <laughs> because we were of course sending that metadata. So if you develop your own skill for that, then you're the one who's getting. Correct. Hit. Yeah, it's all it's all fully supported over there. Yeah. Okay. Side note on uh, HLS and Apple: If you want to be listed in their directory, you must use HLS. Uh, that would be correct. Yeah. They have a little bit of an identity crisis over there because they're still running the uh, radio streams within iTunes. And that's sort of a separate thing. Um, and if you want your legacy ICY streams to appear there, you submit those to a different place. But yes, as you pointed out, if you want to show in the, uh, in the app that's in the lower right corner of the iPhone, down in there in radio, those must be HLS. That is correct. Yep. Anything else from anybody? Hey, Greg, um, has it been tested on what the average of all the streams, uh, stream players out there, what is the average bandwidth of uh, everybody, uh, what everybody is sending out right now? I'm going to say the most popular on that is probably 64 HEAAC. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that are running 32. But... Uh, 64 sounds really good. Yeah, you can still get full fidelity with 32 with HEAAC, but you get more SBR, the spectral band uh, replication. So to good ears, it can be a little on the grainy side. It'll still be 15 kilohertz, but it can be grainy. Thank you. Any more questions from the field? If you have a thought in mind, feel free to unmute your microphone and share it with us. I, I'll repeat what I said earlier for those of you that came along. Greg agreed to do this on the shortest possible notice that you can imagine. And so it's not his fault that we got a few of these slides out of order or whatever but he really, really blessed us by showing up today. Thank you guys. Yeah, I really, uh, uh, not only was it short notice, but I, I, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to show this. 
Well, we want to have you back. We want to have you back. And no problem. Uh, do another presentation. We'll fix those slides. Hey, hey. <laughs> Is there a demo package available? Um, we can set you up with a, a full blown, full blown deal. Just ask. Yeah. And anybody interested in in some streams, um, uh, here's one you could go to right now. Just go to um, uh, www.westofnash.com. That's W E S T O F N A S H, as in Nashville. Westofnash.com, and click on the player, and that's all being sourced with our HLS direct encoder. It's going to stream guys and it's going to engine X and it's showing up on one of their players with full metadata and uh, album art. Thank you, Richard. I see you. <laughs> and it actually works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've come up to uh, to an hour already, and we know some are going to have to uh, jump out of here and uh, get the afternoon done. But we're not going to chase you away, Greg. If, uh, so what's for lunch, Barry? Well, we have some virtual pizza here <laughs> and some virtual submarine sandwiches, which I can bring up on the screen for you. <laughs> and you can salivate and just feel very full. And it's good for your diet. <laughs> complete with virtual heartburn <laughs> could, 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 could be so